When I last left off my Discord GamesBot project, I was happily adding 2048 and exploring the new interactions. I've been enjoying the system and I want to move on to making more of my games use it instead of the weird reactions hack I currently use. Unfortunately, things have taken a huge turn of events and I ended up ditching Discord.js entirely, which was the underlying library I used to interface with Discord, and decided to write my own. So buckle up because this is how I made and migrated my current code to my new Discord lib I am calling Discord Minimal. Now before I begin, yes I made this, yes it works, and the bot is actually running using this, but I wouldn't hop aboard the ditch Discord.js train just yet. Discord.js isn't terrible per se, it's actually very good for new people trying to get into bot making as it abstracts a lot of the more difficult things away and overall just makes doing things and accessing data much easier. That being said, these libraries do tend to have downfalls in that they lack more advanced features, which Discord.js definitely does not or they tend to not scale very well for high usages. This was the first reason I wanted to drop Discord.js, as while I used it, the bot consumed upwards of 750 megabytes of RAM. The bot often crashed after a few days because my 2GB VPS just ran out of memory. Now using my library, the bot is sitting at a cool 50 megabytes. The RAM usage can be probably attributed to the heavy caching that Discord.js does in order to circumvent rate limits, and just deliver an easier bot making experience. For the average person, this isn't too bad, but when your bot is in over 3,000 servers, well, it tends to chew up memory pretty quick. Now, that was annoying, but it's not what pushed me over the edge and made me make my own library. What did it in was the two Discord changes that my bot had to adopt. The first, more pressing one was that my bot was in so many servers that they forced me to implement what Discord calls as sharding. TLDR of this is it allows the bot to be split across multiple processes and or connections to Discord, with each one only interfacing with a subset of servers the bot is in. Discord.js does provide a way to do this, but even their auto option I just couldn't seem to get the hang of and I wasn't too thrilled with it. On top of that, Discord also announced that bots would no longer by default receive chat message events, and said the feature is now hidden behind an intent that bots can enable to gain access. Unfortunately, my bot is so large that I can't just flip the switch and would have to instead apply to have the intent enabled for me, and I don't really have high hopes that they would allow me, nor do I really want to do it that way anymore. Instead of doing everything through chat messages that start with an exclamation point, I might as well move to using the built-in, more efficient and extendable slash commands. Again, Discord.js does provide support for slash commands, and their new slash command builder is pretty nice, but at the time when I started it, the command builder did not exist and creating commands was not the most intuitive. I can keep going on and nitpicking, but the bottom line is that interacting with the REST API and WebSocket, like the ones that the Discord API are built on, aren't actually that difficult, and I want more control over what features I have and how they work. If there was anyone to blame, I wanted to be myself, so with that being said, I decided it was time to make my own Discord API wrapper, and have since decided to call it Discord Minimal, because I am attempting to provide a minimal implementation. The first step in this process was to create a new npm project and start with making a very simple REST call to Discord that would post a message into a test channel just to get a very basic grasp of making a request to the Discord API. With that out of the way, I can now move on to actually making this thing a library. Because my bot was using Discord.js, I wanted to lower the amount of work I had to do to switch from Discord.js to my Discord Minimal. Because of that, you'll notice they do a lot of things very similar, such as how embeds are created and provide methods that you can use to chain things together to set various variables in state. The first major feature that needed to be tackled was receiving events from the Discord gateway. Now this may sound complex, but it's really not. The Discord gateway at the core is just a WebSocket. It does have some special requirements in sending things like identity message and custom heartbeats, but we can slowly and easily build those in. I need to make a connection to the gateway before I can do any of this, so I need to make a new WebSocket with a given base URL that Discord returns in the Git Gateway endpoint, and stored that connection along with some other data values that I'll talk about as we get into later in an array. I also attach three listeners to the WebSocket to listen for relevant data. Close and errors are just housekeeping things that I won't talk about, but message is the bread and butter of this whole thing. Anytime we receive a message from Discord on this WebSocket, a message event gets called and includes the data that Discord is sending to us. I feed this data off to my main message handler function, which handles the processing of this data. There are two main pieces of data that we care about on each message in order to further understand what this data is. The first is mainly housekeeping and that's the sequence number of the message. Basically, it's just an ID that Discord will occasionally ask for to learn where your bot is at and processing the data it's sent to you. The more important bit of information is the opcode. 
There are a bunch of different op codes, and you can see a full list in Discord's documentation, but most of them are not that interesting, and I only handle a few of them. These are all just used for disconnecting, reconnecting, and resuming the bot's love socket connection, I'm not really going to talk about them for now, but one we will really do care about is the op code 0. Op code 0 signifies it is some sort of Discord event, such as a message that's sent in a channel, a reaction to a message, a user clicking on a button, and essentially everything else that happens in Discord that maybe you may want to listen for. I simply pass off the data to an onEvent method that pulls off the event's ID, which informs me of what event it is and what event data it holds. And then I check that event ID through a very large and not quite exhaustive switch statement. Yes, there are cleaner ways to do this, but this method suffices for now. You'll notice that I have a lot of these switch cases marked as to do, and that's because I just haven't needed to implement these events yet for my bots. But the process of adding new events is pretty easy. First is to make the event this library omits when the event occurs. The ones I currently support are all defined here, and for end users and myself on Discord GamesBot, you can simply call the on method from this class and provide the relevant event you want to listen for, and it will call the provided lambda function and pass through that event's data. Anyways, back to the library. With the event emitter created, I just need to make the class that will hold all the event's relevant data, as again outlined by the Discord API docs, as well as to have some other little helper methods to condense some of the high use logic. To actually instantiate these classes, I opted for a static from JSON function that takes in the raw any data from the gateway event and generates the relevant class and subclasses. Object assign just wasn't robust enough for this need case, and the inability to overload the constructor in TypeScript meant I was limited to only putting the required fields as parameters, else I would have constructors with dozens of required and optional parameters. So from JSON is the path I went. And that's about it. Events are now properly handled from the Discord gateway and propagated for use by those who use this library. That's not the end of this though, as while I have the ability to receive events from the gateway and respond via calling REST endpoints, there are still two major pieces I need to implement. The first being sharding, as it is currently preventing my bot from working at all. Again, the concept of sharding is pretty simple. Instead of having one connection to Discord's gateway receiving every event, we can split it up into multiple connections to the gateway with each connection in charge of a particular subset of servers and other features. Thus reducing the overall strain on one specific connection, and if I wanted to, splitting the bot between multiple machines or hosts. I'm not going to be getting nearly that complex and will instead just be utilizing multiple sockets. The number of shards we need to use is already given to us by the get gateway endpoints I referred to earlier that gave us the gateway's base URL. Give that number, instead of just spinning up one WebSocket, we spin up that number of WebSockets. Each one just funnels back to the same message, error, and close functions, so no other code changes really need to be made to support one versus multiple sockets. The only thing I had to implement is session resuming, meaning that when a WebSocket disconnects, it can reconnect to Discord and have Discord send back all the events it missed while the WebSocket was disconnected. This technically isn't a sharding only concept as I could have added it out of the gate, but it becomes a more or less necessary thing with sharding. The second major piece was to add a way to respect rate limits. This was by far the hardest and most complex bit of code that I had to make for this library and it took me a few tries to get it right, but this is what I ended up with. Now the fundamentals of rate limiting are pretty easy to understand. Particular actions and endpoints are limited to a certain rate, usually in request or executions in X amount of seconds. Exceeding this limit and your request will either be ignored, returned back to you with an error, or something else signifying that you've exceeded the rate limit. Discord uses a bucket-based approach to rate limits in that there are different rate limits for each bucket, with each bucket usually being just one specific endpoint, but sometimes has multiple endpoints grouped into it. For my solution to this problem, it really just boils down to one big async queue. The solution isn't perfect and could still generate rate limit issues, but it makes it much less likely to happen. The biggest issue with the rate limit system is that you don't know the buckets and rate limits for each endpoint until you actually make a request and receive the headers providing that rate information. At any rate, each API call that gets made through the library is sent through this queue request function. This basically just continually chains each API request in a queue to better process the responses. The actual meat of this logic though is done in this process queues function that takes all the request data and checks to see if it is, has information on the request bucket and rate limit. This information is stored in a large bucket map object and if there is information present, it checks to see if this request would go over the rate limit amount. More on how that works in just a second. 
After that, I proceed to actually make the REST call to Discord's API, and then once the response promise gets called, I process all the rate limit related headers that it returns. First, I grab the bucket name that the request actually falls under, and also grab the bucket that I currently have it falling under. I log this request's buckets and relevant rate limit information so that it is always persisted and up to date. I then do a quick sanity check that the actual bucket matches my internally saved bucket name but currently it doesn't really do much besides output an error if they don't match. Next, I specifically call the global rate limit header to make sure I have not hit that rate limit. The global rate limit exists separately of all the buckets, but at a much higher limit. If for whatever reason I'm hitting this limit, this header is present. I then go and set my global wait variable to the time that Discord is telling me I need to wait before my rate limit resets. This will trigger the whole queue to get halted until this bit of code returns back. I then also do another sanity check that I haven't exceeded this bucket's rate limit, but it also only outputs an error message currently. Then last but not least, I either halt the queue if there is a global wait I must do, or return back that this request is concluded. Going back up to the pre-request rate limit check, we can now better understand how it works. It first grabs the bucket that this request belongs to and checks if the number of remaining requests is zero. If it is, I know this request can possibly cause the library to exceed the rate limit. To be absolutely sure, I need to see if the current timestamp is before when Discord says my rate limit will reset. If not, I need to calculate how long until this rate limit will reset, adding a small buffer, and then setting up a quick timeout for the duration of time before requeuing this message in attempt to be sent again. I use set timeout here to prevent this message from blocking the entire queue like the global wait does, because this rate limit is bucket specific and many requests may still be able to be sent while this one has to wait. And with that, my somewhat crude attempt at a rate limit handler is complete, and I now can fire away API request, and this will handle all of the rest. And with that, conceptually the library is complete. All that was left was to actually replace Discord.js in my bot with this, and add in all of the missing API calls and helper functions such as slash scan information and editing a message embed. There were a lot of back and forth work here with updating the library, posting npm, and making more changes on the bot. Oh yeah, that brings up another good point in that this library is up and available on NPM for all of you to use as well as its open source if you really want to check it out and maybe even help with adding some missing events and API calls. Links to everything will be down in the description below. So at the end of the day, should you switch your bot from Discord.js to my library? Probably not. Discord.js will likely always have better feature coverage and better implementations to the things like rate limits. But that being said, if you want to try something else out or don't like Discord.js, then yeah, feel free to give this a try and let me know what you think. But at any rate, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you all next time. Peace out.